What's up guys, Justin here from TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to talk about some of your options for different kinds of artificial lighting within your model. So, and in this case we're going to focus on artificial lighting um, without using the environment settings like the sunlight or the background or anything like that. So if you like these tutorials, you're looking for more rendering tutorials every week, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video, I wanted to talk specifically about lighting your model with interior artificial lights. And so right now, this is just a very simple model that I've created that has some glass, and then it's got a little bit of furniture in here. And if I was to start off and run an interactive render, what this is gonna look like is this is basically being lit by the sunlight and the background on the interior. And so what I wanna do is I want to, instead of lighting this from the outside, I wanna create more of a night scene on the interior where this is being lit by artificial lighting. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in to my V-Ray asset editor and I guess I'll leave my interactive render on actually so you can see what this does. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna turn my sunlight off. And so the sunlight is found in the lights section of your asset editor. And so when I turn that off, the first thing you're gonna notice is you're still getting some light in from the exterior of your model. And that's coming from your background settings, which um, you can adjust by going over into the settings section and turning off the background, so unchecking this. You can see since we don't have any artificial lights in here right now, if you turn that off, this goes completely dark. So we'll go back in and turn that off in just a second. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take a look at the different kind of light options within V-Ray. And so if you have V-Ray 3.6 loaded in SketchUp, um, you're gonna have a toolbar that you can access within your toolbar section um, for V-Ray lights. And so I'm gonna close my interactive render for just a second. And uh, so if you right click in your toolbar section, you turn on V-Ray lights, you're gonna get this little toolbar right here. And so we've talked a little bit about the rectangle light in the past. Um, we'll talk about that for just a second. But basically, if you have your interactive render running, Basically, if you have your interactive render running and you add a rectangle light, what that's gonna look like is that's just gonna add a rectangle in your model that's gonna emit light. And so you can see what this does is this is actually emitting light into your model. And it's kind of a soft light. It's not casting a ton of very specific shadows or anything like that. But you can use this by going into your lighting settings. You can adjust like the intensity of this. So I could bring this up to something like 100 if I wanted to. And you can see how this is gonna light my model it's gonna light the interior of my model. And notice that if you come in here and you use the scale tool to kind of resize it, the larger it is, the more light this is gonna cast. So you can see how as I come in here and I make this bigger, this is casting more light. And so you can adjust both the intensity as well as the size here in order to cast some light in your model using the rectangle light. And one thing to note about this, and we've talked about this before, is if you go into the options, if you don't want this big rectangle in here, you can just check this box for invisible under your options and then this will go this will cast the light within your model without it actually being visible geometry. So that's definitely something you can use. Um, in this case and I'd love to have you guys kind of weigh in on this as well. For me, I would probably more use the rectangle light as kind of a fill-in light on the back side. So if you have anywhere where you have too many shadows or something like that, you can kind of fill that in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off though, and I want to focus more on a couple of the other lighting options. And so the first option I'm going to talk about is the sphere light. And so the sphere light is this second option in here. Basically you click on it and then you click in your model and you basically single click to set your first point and then you move your mouse in order to set the size of this light. And so when you set the size of this light, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Basically what a sphere light does is it comes in here and it 
casts light in any different or in all different directions. So it's not a directional light. It's basically like a point in space that casts light. And so one thing I'm going to note about this is you'll notice this isn't very bright right now. And so you can come in here and you can change the intensity. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this to watts instead of to default. And this is kind of a personal preference thing. I like the watts just because the numbers make a little bit more sense in my head um, because I can kind of think about light bulbs and wattage and that sort of thing. And honestly, that doesn't even really make sense because I don't think that the power output of the light and the lighting output of the light are the same thing. But in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 30 watts. And you'll notice if you come in here and you use the scale tool to make this bigger or smaller, that's gonna affect the amount of light that this is going to cast. So you can see how as I make this bigger or smaller, everything gets brighter and dimmer. And so one thing to note about doing interior renderings is a lot of the time you don't necessarily want to adjust the brightness um, or the intensity of these lights in order to lighten everything up. What you want to do instead is you want to go over to the settings section in your tray and you can adjust the exposure value of your camera. So if you set this to a lower value like 13 and a half, you're going to notice that the interior of this is going to get brighter. Or if you set this to something like 13, it's going to get even brighter still. And so what you can do with that is you can use that to brighten up your model without making this so bright that it kind of washes everything out. But one of the things that you're going to be able to do, and I'm going to minimize my asset editor for a second, and let's see if we can do this. Maybe what I need to do is move my frame buffer over here. But basically what you can do with this is you can take a light like this one and you can set it inside of something like this lamp. So. In this case, I would take this sphere light and I would basically place that where the bulb would be within this lamp. So you can see how as I move this up, this is getting to be more and more like a lamp is actually casting this light. And you do have to be a little bit careful, um, A, with the lamp model that you use and also the material of the shade like you'll notice right now this shade isn't really very translucent but I think it's still a good example because you can see how basically your light is being cast out of this lamp as if this lamp was on and then what you could do if you wanted this to be a little bit brighter or something like that is you could come in and you could either adjust your exposure or within your asset editor, you could adjust the intensity. So I could bring this up to something like 100 watts in order to get more light out of that. And you can see how that's casting this light and it's being affected by the lamp that we put this in. So you can use sphere lights in order to kind of simulate effects like this. And you do kind of have to play around with some of these settings in order to try to get the best result for you. But this should give you a good overview so you can start doing that. And so now what I want to talk about is in addition to adding a sphere light, which is a light that basically projects light in all directions, you can also add spotlights to your model. And so what a spotlight is, is a spotlight is a model or a, a light with a direction. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to click on the button for spotlight. And then I'm just going to come up and click on the ceiling right here. And so you can see what that did is that placed a little piece of geometry up here in the corner um, within your SketchUp model. And then if you go back and you look at your interactive render, you've got a light right here that's basically being cast down on the ground. And so we'll talk about the other options in a second. The other thing I want to note about that is when you're coming in here and you're setting this, when you have the option selected for the spotlight tool, what you'll notice is this tells you hold shift to control direction. So basically what that means is that means if you hold down the shift key and do this to set this light, you're actually able to set your base point and I'm still holding the shift key down, whoops. But you see how I can move my mouse in order to set where this light is actually pointing. So as long as I'm holding the shift key, I can set where that light is pointing. It's also going to ask me to set the cone angle. So that's how wide the cone of this light is in your model. And then the last thing it's going to ask for is my penumbra angle. And we'll talk about this more in a second, but basically that sets like how harsh the transition is between this edge and the area where the light isn't pointing anymore. So you can see as I move my mouse out, you can see how this is going to basically extend my light out more and it's going to generate more light based on my settings. 
And so now, let's take a quick look at what adjusting those settings with those lights is actually gonna do. So we're gonna go back into our V-Ray Asset Editor. And you can see how when I brought those in, I got an option in here for my first spotlight which I can turn on and off, and my second spotlight. And you'll notice that second spotlight is casting a lot more light, and we'll talk about that in a second. So to start off, let's turn off that second light that we created and focus on the first one. So the first one, if you remember, we just came in here and we just single clicked. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn my sphere light off as well so we can focus on this spotlight. And so let's take a look at some of our settings. So we're gonna click on this light, and then if you don't have this little menu over here, just click on the little arrow to pop this out. But there's a couple different settings that come with a spotlight that you can adjust. So the first one is the cone angle. And so what the cone angle is gonna do is that's gonna adjust how wide the light goes as you're casting this. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to turn off my background in my settings so we can see this a little bit better. And I'm also going to adjust this translucent glass material so it's more of a V-Ray glass material. So I'm just gonna apply a material preset of glass in here. That way we'll get a better reflection. This looks a little bit better. But you can see how as I adjust this, this is basically affecting how wide the cone from the light is. And you'll notice the wider the cone, the brighter the brighter the light is in this image in the way that it affects everything. And so the other thing that's gonna be important on this one is this penumbra angle. And so basically, as I click and drag this penumbra angle, what you're gonna notice is the edges, you'll notice the edges as we kind of drag this out become a lot fuzzier. So you don't have as much of a defined cone as you did before. And this is really more realistic. You can see as I drag this out more, not only is this making the edges here fuzzier, but it's also allowing the light to travel further from your spotlight. So depending on how defined you want your spotlight to be, you can either turn this penumbra angle down in order to really focus the light on one area or up in order to have a spotlight that's more generalized that's lighting your whole model a little bit more. And that's why the second light was so much brighter because it has a much higher penumbra angle than the first one. And it also has a very large cone angle. So you can see how if I adjust this, it's adjusting how much light these are generating within my model. And one cool thing about this is since these lights are in here as SketchUp components, and I'm actually gonna delete the second one but what you can do is you can select this light and you can use like the move tool in copy mode to create a couple copies of this. So let's say I created one, two additional copies. That would basically allow you to have three copies of the same light within this model. And when that happens, what that means is you can come in here and you can adjust the settings on these. And since they're copies of the same component, whenever you adjust one of them, they're all going to adjust. So you can see how as I go in here and adjust this, each one of these is retaining the settings that I adjust from adjusting this one light. And so you can see how with the sphere light and the spotlight, this is a much brighter image. And you can just kind of play around with this and figure out exactly how you're gonna fill in the different spaces, how bright you wanna be, that sort of thing. So another light type within V-Ray that we're not really gonna talk about in this video, but it can be very useful is the IES light. So an IES light is basically a light file that you can get from like lighting manufacturers. It's basically real world accurate lighting within your V-Ray rendering. And so basically what that means is you can download the information about a light from a manufacturer. You can import that into your model and then your model will act in a realistic way based on that light type. Um, the Omni light tool is very similar to the sphere light tool. And quite honestly, I'm not 100% sure what the difference is. So any of you V-Ray pros out there, leave a comment below and let me know when you'd use one versus the other. But it acts basically the same way. So I could bring an Omni light in. And we'll go ahead And scale it up 
to make it a little bit bigger and then you can go into your V-Rite asset editor and you can turn off your spotlights and you'll just have this omni light in here and um, the only thing I can find is it's not quite as bright as the sphere light so I don't know if it's more realistic or honestly I'm not a hundred percent sure what the difference is between the omni light and the sphere light so like I said leave a comment below let me know if you know the difference which one you'd prefer to use so and then the last kind of light that I want to talk about is I want to talk about an emitter material and so what an emitter material is is that's a material within your model itself that's going to emit light so um, a great example of this is if you look at these spotlights right now they don't look very realistic because there's no point on the ceiling that's actually lit up so you've just got this weird kind of light floating in space well, what we could do is we could come in here at the head, and I'm going to turn my interactive render off for a second. But we could come in here at the head of the lights and we could just draw a circle. And then we could apply a material to it. So in this case, we'll just use this color C01. And then what you could do is within your V ray material settings, you could actually apply an emissive material. So you can see how as I move this down, there's a lot of different options for different LED materials and that sort of thing. Or you can just go into your quick settings and set the option for emissive. And you can see how basically what this does is this creates a material that's gonna emit light. So if I go back into my scene and I activate my interactive render, You can see how there's kind of a bright point of light right here and probably what we need to do is go into our asset editor and turn that intensity up of that light because obviously it's not showing up very well right now but you can see how as I turn that intensity level up it becomes more visible and this kind of makes more sense because you've got a little bit of a light up here that's actually emitting light down on your wall so you can use emissive materials to create light as well you do need to be careful with this though because if you start applying this to things like light bulbs and uh, other things that have a lot of geometry then your load times and your render times are going to go way up so a lot of the time it's it's better to use something like a sphere light in your lamp, for example, than using an emissive material. And so another example of the way this could work is I'm going to stop my interactive render and let's say, for example, that I had, and this isn't super detailed, but if I was to come in here and I was to apply, let's say I applied a texture to this. So let's say I was to apply a sky texture to this face, like if this was a TV or something, I could come in and I could select that material using the eyedropper tool. And then within V-Ray, I could set that as an emissive material, meaning that would actually emit light. And then if I was to run an interactive render, There we go. So if I was to run an interactive render, you can see how basically this material is casting light that's reflecting off of this glass and also off of the ground. So you could use this to create something that emits that light. So that gives you something to kind of play around with, but you can see how this takes a little bit more time to render than if we were to just light our model with the different lighting types. So and then the last thing is once you get all your settings kind of the way that you want them and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this emissive material for right now because I don't really want it in the final render that I'm doing. But once you kind of get everything the way that you want it and once you have all your lights in here the way that you want them to be, you can kind of double check that using your interactive render. And then once you have your lighting the way you want it to be, you can do a non-interactive render to get your final best result because that's going to give you a better result. So we'll just come in here, click the drop down, and then just do our final rendering. And that's going to give you your result that you're looking for.
So that's where I'm going to end this tutorial. That should give you at least kind of an overview of the way the different artificial lights work within V-Ray. But leave a comment below. Let me know if you found this helpful, uh, what else you'd like to see on this channel. I just love having that conversation with you guys. Um, as always, if you like what you're seeing on this channel, you want more rendering tutorials, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you like this, make sure you hit that like button. And as always, I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.